Hi everyone, I am André and I'll be presenting on behalf of our team that includes people from the Faculdade de Ciências and Instituto Superior Técnico from the University of Lisbon, also from Open Lab at Newcastle University and people from Northumbria University. I'll present our work on investigating the trade-offs of everyday tax entry collection methods. Before I start, there are many more details and insights that in the paper that I simply won't be able to cover. But here's a brief overview of what our paper contributes. First, WildKey is an open source toolkit to support everyday typing data collection. Uh, a four week empirical study with 26 participants. An analysis of the trade-offs and implications of different collection methods, and specifically the differences between experience sampling and passive sensing and a publicly available dataset. For a bit of context, smartphones are everywhere and we use smartphones basically for everything. One of the main things that we do with our smartphones is typing. We type to browse the web, we type to work, we type to socialize, to shop, among many other things. And text is actually quite complex and quite interesting, so it's both cognitively and a physically demanding task. And it turns out that we can actually do quite a lot with this sort of data. So Passwork has, for example, differentiated between healthy subjects and Parkinson's disease patients, and others has gone as far as trying to predict blood alcohol levels with this sort of data. However, collecting this type of data is still challenging. We have to overcome privacy issues during passive collection, as well as understand the impact and the differences between different collection methods. To be able to address it, we built WildKey, a privacy-aware keyboard toolkit for data collection in the wild. Our motto was to collect everyday typing data, enabling continuous and spontaneous assessments without collecting any sensitive information. We extended the Android Open Software project uh, keyboard and as such, the keyboard comes with everything that you come to expect from one. On top of the analytics, we also built a study manager to create, schedule and deploy your own studies. You can deploy your own version of WildKey in its own ecosystem without having to rely in any of our infrastructure. As for data collection, it passively analyzes data anywhere you type. Uh, and it enables you to do experiencing sampling tasks, such as transcriptions and compositions. Since we know that running in the wild studies is challenging, the toolkit also enables you to schedule questionnaires and other custom-made tasks. The keyboard does not store any text content, and this is quite crucial. So it instead, it calculates every metric locally and only stores resulting metrics in the cloud. Furthermore, no data that would allow the reconstruction of the text is ever stored or sent. It also provides an incognito mode that is always available to users. With the toolkit, we investigated the trade-offs between different collection methods in a user study. We were interested in comparing experience sampling with passive sensing across these axes, so coverage, compliance, performance, and user experience in regards to privacy and effort. We ran a four-week longitudinal study with 26 participants ranging from 18 to 63 years old. Participants had about two weeks of experience sampling tasks and four weeks of passive sensing. In each week of experience sampling, participants did either transcriptions or composition tasks. Participants filled in um, a questionnaire at the end of each week and we had interviews at the end of the study. To deal with the unbalanced data, we rely on a mixed effect model to analyze the data and check the effects of method. We rely on a Friedman test and a post hoc Wilcoxon for the questionnaire. And finally, we use a primarily deductive analysis for the interview data focused on compliance, performance and effort. So our results, we collected about 1 million characters with a wide variance between participants, with one contributing about 4,000 characters while another 240,000 characters. We collected about 38K passive sensing trials, 600 transcriptions and 300 compositions. In total, we saw about 30K suggestions and 30K autocorrect uses. As for compliance, 
compositions at about 72% with descriptions at 89% compliance. In regards to performance, typing behaviors, privacy and effort, pretty much everything is significantly affected by the method you, you use to collect data. From performance with words per minute and error rates with total uncorrected and corrected error rate, to behaviors such as the amount of time it takes to travel between two keys, so flight time, to the old time, even the use of suggestions and how to correct is affected. For example, if you are conducting a study to assess the use of a novel algorithm for suggestions, you might want to consider using passive sensing or uh, closed compositions rather than the traditional transcriptions. We also found differences in how users perceive their privacy and effort which are affected again by method. In regards to effort, passive sensing was the only one that was seamless. As before mentioned, I use the keyboard normally as I would any other. Uh, if you are considering using text entry to monitor a disease, the only way to ensure that users are willing to continuously provide data seems to be through passive sensing. As for trust and privacy, not collecting any raw textual content was essential and was highlighted by most users. When it comes to sharing their data, it all depends on the purpose and context. So, for example, in clinical context, you might get away with asking for more data from users, while in other scenarios where there aren't any clear benefits, users might refrain from contributing. Lastly, who disseminates your keyboard and where you make it available and how you handle the whole onboarding process affects how users perceive their trustworthiness of the application itself and the data collection method. So, in summary, different collection data collection methods will affect users' performance, typing behaviors, and willingness to use. As we can see here by the wide disparity between the plots, each color representing each collection method. For example, while passive sensing users are willing to continuously uh, uh, to use continuously with low effort, flight time and all time and error rates uh, are affected, showing an overall lower value than other collection methods. And for more details about these sort of differences, please check out the paper. And for anything else, please reach, reach out to me. You can find both the data set and the toolkit available to anyone with links in the paper. Thank you for listening.